Hey folks, I kind of got this urge to make a few uh, River Cane arrows. So, though I'm not an expert at it, I thought I'd invite y'all to tag along. And the way I do it, I use River Cane for the main shaft, and then I put a dogwood insert for the dock and for the fore tip. So, I kind of show you how I do it. Here's the type of arrow that I'm going to make. It's got uh, just a flint tip on it, a uh, little pine pitch, sinew. The black is the dogwood insert. It actually goes into the cane shaft, oh, inch and a half, two inches. In the cane shaft, it's wrapped with sinew also to hold it in place. And then on the fletching end is uh, the notch, which is dogwood. And it's inserted about three quarters of an inch, and then you wrap sinew on on that end. But what we'll do is uh, we'll put the dogwood inserts on both ends, the flesh, and then we'll uh, paint the, the arrows using we use, uh, charcoal for the black, and red and yellow ochre for additional colors. But we'll probably use turkey fletching again. Uh, probably the oaks in you. Oh, here's here's uh, the, the three shafts that I'm planning to use, and they're already they're already pretty straight just naturally. Uh, but not all not all uh, river cane uh, will work great. Uh, some of it uh, shorter pieces that uh, I think if it grows in the middle of the the river cane more just the whole batch of cane. It grows better because it grows straighter. The pieces that are over to, off to the side, uh, when it grows, the, the branches, when the little branches come off, uh, they make a thicker or a wider spot on the stem, and you can you can see. And this one would take a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of heat to get that bent straight. Plus, you've got this little knock uh, built in. There. So even though this is a nice looking piece uh, width wise. It probably wouldn't be real good for uh, make a cane arrow. And these other two pieces, uh, these are both really nice, straight, naturally straight pieces. But they both get, uh, I'm not sure what causes this, but it'll get a split in the cane. And I don't know if that's just, uh, maybe when it's drying, uh, it ferments or something in there. I'm, I'm not sure what, what causes that, but it'll split split the material and that piece has got one and, and you can see this one I've kind of circled it to, to show you that it'll get a split in it and uh, like I say it, it may work fine to use these as an arrow also but I just I don't like doing it and then I've got a couple of uh, straighteners I'll heat it up and uh, use a uh, elk and deer antler to straighten my pieces then I've got a couple pieces of uh, this is just dogwood, just to use it for dogwood shafts, but still left it with the bark on and it's uh, dried pretty good. Before I start straightening, and you can see this is already pretty, it's pretty straight. There's still some, some lumps and grooves that need to be heated up, but I like to take the Right here where the, the nodules are, and kind of kind of thin those off just a little bit, and then just kind of sand them a little bit. And it doesn't uh, it doesn't take much. You just and you can see it'll knock that rough part off. I kind of knock all those off, so. I'll go ahead and knock, get all the three of these cleaned up and, and kind of sand them a little bit and then we'll start heating them up. Okay, we got the all the nodules, or nodes, nodules, they're all uh, cleaned off and they're smooth. They're not going to catch when you, if you're going to be shooting a river cane arrow, there's not going to be a little bump where it's going to catch and kick your arrow out. But I've got these all all marked 
Got a little, little mark right in here. That's a, it's just going to be a rough mark at this point. The main focus is what is this this nodule right here, because I want my dogwood insert is going to fit in, and I want it to, I want it to butt up against this nodule on the inside. Even though I'm going to have sinew from this point back to to make it a strong uh, join, I want that the the bottom end of that uh, dogwood insert is going to butt up against this also to make it even stronger. So I've got this point uh, uh, roughly marked and then it comes down and I've got uh, a rough mark right in here and, and this one can vary, it's going to fluctuate. This is going to be where the knock goes in this end and the fletching. So, But I've got plenty, plenty extra from this point out and the same thing from the other end, from this mark uh, down. I've got plenty that way I got. Uh, I can bend as I need to, to uh, heat it and bend it to straighten it. And then after I got it uh, pretty straight, then I'll cut them off. I'll cut this end first where the, the flint head insert will be. I'll cut it, this end first, measure out, and, and uh, cut the knock in. Okay, this point we're ready to start uh, start heating and, and lining lining this up. It doesn't take a whole lot. You can get you can get quite a bit of pressure built up between these uh, antler pieces, and you can get it uh, you can get them pretty close. So you can get it right in there where you want it to get a good uh, good tight uh, bend. So we'll keep uh, keep heating and bending. We'll get back with you. We just got just a couple little little spots to finish up. And I think we just about got. He's looking good. Okay. Well, that takes about the longest time is is straightening them. Once you straighten them, it's kind of downhill from there. But here's our our three pieces. They're all nice and nice and straight. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll cut them on this end. And we'll measure them, get our measure the same, and then we'll cut the top ends. Okay, there's our three. I'll go ahead and cut them to cut them to length. There's our three, our three uh, river cane shafts. And now we're getting ready to we'll start. Uh, we've got to carve the dogwood inserts and put those in. So we'll go to that next. But uh, there they are, nice and, nice and straight. Before we cut and make our wood inserts that we go on the end, we're going to go ahead and wrap the end in sinew. And then we'll, we'll take the inside and we'll kind of ream it out, kind of at an angle. But at this point, we're going we're gonna to rough this up just a little bit, and we're going to wrap it in sinew. And we'll take it to the next step.
got the surfaces roughed, roughed up pretty good. I'll put just a little bit of hide glue on there before I start. So it'll stick real good. Got some of this elk sinew. All I'm doing is just letting it wrap back on itself. I want to get a pretty good start right there at the at the very end. Wrap it in there pretty good, and then I'll just start bringing it bringing it down. This sinew is pretty important because it's going to help to keep the the cane from splitting after you put the insert in there and when you shoot it. So this That's pretty good, pretty good coat of sinew, but I think I'm going to use just one more right towards the, right towards the outside. I've got some, this is pretty good sinew. There's a, there's one of them, got it wrapped all the way to that joint. And now we'll just uh, let this set up and let that dry real hard. Well, there's three sinew wrapped. Now we'll just let those sit and dry real good and we'll start working on uh, dogwood, dogwood inserts.